Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at automatic containerization in Dynamics 365. So if you've used the packing station before, you know that the packing station is more of a manual process where you're opening containers, packing the items inside of a container, and then closing the container. What containerization allows you to do is when the wave is created, it allows a the system to create a container for you, put the items in the container for you, suggest the container size, okay? So it's gonna do that based off of dimensions that we're gonna give the containers in, the in our setup here. It actually does this on in the wave process, so this adds a wave process step to create the container, and we'll take a look at the, how we set that up in a minute. Now, something that er people always ask me when you're starting off with this containerization is, you know, can we edit the container? Uh, short answer to that is no, you can, cannot. Once the system has created the container and has assigned the container, you cannot edit the container. Now you can do modifications to, to allow this, to allow the change of the container type, um, but out of the box, there's no way to change the container. Now that could be important to you or not important to you, to be honest with you, for clients that I've worked with that have used containerization a lot of them that, you know, we write all this code to change the container, but nobody ever really uses it that often. I mean, I'm not saying they never use it, but they don't use it that often. Um, but it is something you can write if they want. Now, typically you, you would want it if you're using, if you're using like shipping software that's relying on those box dimensions, um, you will have to have some way to change those boxes if it's wrong, if you're gonna change the box, right? Um, if you're not using those dimensions for anything, if you think about it, even though the system suggests, you know, a medium sized box or whatever, um, if you physically put it in a small box, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, unless you're using those dimensions for some kind of shipping software. Okay. So let's go ahead and hop right into the system. Let's take a look at the setup on this. The setup is pretty simple. Um, so we're going to go underneath uh, warehouse management and then setup. All right. And then we're going to go into this container section. First thing we'll look at is the container types. So we'll go in there. And the, the containers we're going to be using today are this large, medium, and small box. And we've put in weights here, and I've also put in dimensions. So I put in the container dimensions and then the container maximums. So in this case, I've kept it to be the same amount, but you know, if, if your container uh, dimensions were 12 by 12 by 12, but you wanted to leave some room for packing materials and you wanted the maximums to be 10 by 10 by 10. Uh, this is definitely one place you can do it. I'll show you in other places. You can kind of do that same sort of thing in a minute. Um, but, but basically what you're going to do here is you're going to, you're going to set up your container dimensions here. So if you notice on the, on the large box is 12 by 12 by 12, medium is 10 by 10 by 10, and then the small box is seven by seven by seven. Okay. Now the other dimension that we want to set up, let me just go and we'll hop out of warehouse management for just a second, go to product information management, and we'll look at a product. So if we go to release products, we'll look at the A001. And we have these dimensions here, height, width, weight, and volume dimensions here. Now if we go to manage inventory and we take a look at the physical dimensions, we can tie that to a unit. So you have different, different uh, dimensions by unit there. Now, the other thing that's not out right now is if you have product variants, there's, you can't do dimensions by variant. Again, that's a modification you have to do to be able to do the dimensions by variant. A couple ways of working around that. You can take the maximum uh, dimension on, on your variant. Uh, you know, so if, if you've got one variant that's, you know, 12 by 12 by 12, you can put that in the, as the maximum, you know, that works unless you've got a wide range, you know, if, if your biggest one is 12 by 12 by 12 and your smallest one is three by three by three, it doesn't really work that well. But if they're fairly close in dimension, you can use that max dimension there for that. So let's continue on. So that's the, the setup for the release product. Let's go back to warehouse management though, and we'll take a look at the rest of the setup for the containerization. So the next thing that you want to make sure you get set up is this container groups. And we've got a, one here called boxes and it goes large, medium, and small. That's really important that you go from your largest box to your smallest box. What the system's going to do is it's going to look at the volume of the box, look at the volume of the items that are in there and try and downsize it to a box to the next size down. So you always want it to start at the biggest one and then go down smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. Now here, this is also another opportunity 
to change the amount of the container that's being utilized. So these are all set at 100%. But you know, if you only pack it at 80% to allow for packing materials, you can change this to 80% or, or whatever values you need there. You can change, change the utilization amount. All right, and then the next thing we want to do is look at the container build template. I've got one here called boxes. This is where we're going to put our container group. So this is going from our large box to our small box. And you have the base query types. Now if we go ahead and hit edit here, we're doing sales allocations, but you have transfer allocations and containers. Um, the wave step code, remember I said this is going to, you're going to set this up on the wave. So on the wave um, method, you're going to go and put this wave step code. So we'll remember this for in a minute and allow splits. So this is going to allow you to split the items up. And then you have here in the container packing strategy, pack into open containers or pack into current containers only. So what it'll kind of do is, is the waves or the orders releasing, um, it'll, it'll open up a container and it'll put the first item in it. And then it'll check and see if the next item will fit in it, or it might open up another container and it'll leave those containers open. If it's set to in, pack into all open containers, and it'll, it'll look in all the open containers to see if the item will fit. Pack into current container only, it'll open a container, put a first item in it. Okay, will the next item go? No, close the container, open a new container. That's, that's kind of the way it's gonna work there. All right, so we're gonna pack into open containers. And then the next thing I wanna do is we're gonna go take a look at our wave template. So if we go underneath warehouse management, waves, wave templates, um, we're going to use warehouse 24 today in this one. And then what I've added here is a method called containerization. Just pull it over from here. And this is where our wave step code comes in and ties the, uh, the, the plan to the, to the wave. So there, so I put 123 there. Now, one other thing you want to do is if we go underneath the work template, so let's go to work and work templates. I've created a, a warehouse 24 work template. One of the things you may want to do is, you know, come up here to the edit query and on sorting, you'll, you'll want to add the container ID here to the sort. And then on the work header breaks, um, make sure you have container ID up in there. And what that's going to do as items are being released, you're going to get work generated by container ID. So when a person's picking, they're actually picking the container and, and not trying to pick several containers at one time. Right. So you'll want to kind of do that on the work template. So what we can do now is let's go and uh, let's go and create a sales order. So we're going to go underneath uh, sales and marketing and sales orders. And we'll do new. And we'll use us-004. Again, I want to use warehouse 24, so I'll put a 24 in there. All right, item number we're going to use today is our I A triple one. We'll just leave quantity of one there, and let's go to the inventory and reserve one of those. Go create a reservation for it, and just reserve a lot there, and close that. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll release this to warehouse. And while that's working, let's talk about what it actually does there. So what it's going to do is it's going to look at the dimensions of the item to see if it's going to fit into that first box that we have. And if it does, it'll fit into that box, that, that box, right? Now, when it goes to the second item, and we've only got one item in this example, but when it goes to the second item, it's going to first check the dimensions and see if, it's, if it'll fit into that box that's open. If it will, then it'll look at the volume that's currently in the box and compare that to the, add the volume of the item that it's trying to put in there and see if it matches the volume of the box, all right? So if, it, if the volume exceeds the volume of the box, it'll create a new box as well, okay? So it just kind of goes literally down like that. So we have released this order. And let's go ahead and let's take a look at the work that was created here for it. Um, this is where we're going to be able to see our container. And if we slide over here to the right, we have our container ID that it created. So this is the container that it's going to, that it wants us to put it in. If we open this container up, we'll see that the A001 went into a small box there, right? So that's what it's going to look like on the work. Now there's a couple of important screens that we want to take a look at. If we go to warehouse management again, and let's go into first, let's go into underneath packing containerizations and containers. This will show you all of your, your containers, right? So we've got this container five, 
which is a small box, um, and it has our AAO1 in it. Another real important screen that you'll want to get used to is this containerization history. This is going to kind of tell you what's going on and how it decided to put the item in, in what box. This becomes a very important report here. So if we look at this line right here, so the container build template boxes, so that's our build template that it's just picking. Um, and then it first it's going to put that item into that into that large box. Remember it starts at the biggest one and then it'll try and consolidate it down. And then if we take a look at this third line here, this is where it's going to, it's trying to, it's basically downsizing it, right? So it basically it started off with that large box. It went to the medium box and says, hey, it fits. So it moved everything down to the medium. And then it tried the small box and then it fits into the small box. So that's where it's actually ending up and how it's coming, coming into the small box. Now, just knowing, you know, from using this before, this becomes very, very important to, to know this containerization history and, and look at this because this is where it's going to tell you exactly what's happening in the background. And these things kind of get complicated when you have a lot of different items going in the box. This is just a one item example, so it's fairly easy. Um, actually, the simplest case you can have, right? But when you get a lot of different items trying to go into different boxes, this report here is invaluable. Okay? So... Today we're taking a look at how, how that automatic containerization works. Again, you can't change it once it's created it, but you can do modifications to, to that containerization table to allow it to do allow you to manually change these things. And if you need more control on your packing or your containerization, I'll put a link to the packing video I did here earlier. I did a, did a packing video for the manual packing station. That gives you complete control over the containerization there. Okay, so I hope you found some value in this video. Until next week, thanks for watching. See you later.